Hey, this is Matt once again. What about to another video? This is another paid request, this time from Gunnel, who one of my thoughts on the 1990 film Teen of New York. For those interested, requested pretty much any type of videos or topics or reviews, reactions, whatever, feel free to send them either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. Now, Teen of New York is an Abel Ferrara film. Abel Ferrara, he's a guy that would go on to do Bad Lieutenant with Harvey Keitel. He did the 90s Body Statures movie. That's the one that takes place on a military base. Way, way back in the day, he did a film called Driller Killer, which really wasn't that good. He also did Miss 45. I think this is one of his better films. My personal favorite probably is still the Body Statures movie he did. Uh, I just liked his touch on that sci-fi story. But this one, it's definitely propelled by his cast. With Christopher Walken, Lawrence Fishburne, you got David Caruso, you got Wesley Snipes, you got small bits from people like Steve Buscemi. <clears throat> but I mean, definitely Christopher Walken just steals it. As does Lawrence Fishburne as well. Now, I remember I first heard about this film on a VHS of The Punisher, the 1989 Punisher movie. It's coming on VHS from Live Entertainment, and they were releasing either films from Caracol or other places. So, in on the VHS of Dolph Lundgren's The Punisher, there was a trailer for Jacob's Ladder, a trailer for this film, and then a trailer for The Punisher video game on Nintendo. So I, I've seen that Punisher V just so many times. I can still remember the trailer and the music in the trailer. Frank White was a free man. The cops tried to stop him their way. Now they're going to stop him his way. I don't know what the music in the trailer is from. I remember really enjoying it. That was a well put together trailer. <clears throat> and when the movie came out, it was a very controversial film. A lot of people did not like it. They thought it was a bit... They didn't have the best flow. Which I can understand to a point. I don't think it really has a smooth flow. A, the least to be, least to see. It is more of a grim film. But like I said, at least it's propelled by... A good cast, a great lead performance by Walken, one of his best. Moody, atmospheric, stylish direction and lighting. And he's trying to do kind of films what Scarface did or New Jack City did, which came out later. You know, the rise and fall of this. Well, not really the rise, but it's. Kind of the the fall of this teen pin, so to speak, or this guy that got too big. Christopher Walken plays Frank White. He gets out of prison, and another thing that works is that you get some fairly violent moments, like this hit on this guy while he's at a phone booth, the way certain cops get killed, sometimes very brutal. Or you don't see it coming, at least not in the direction you thought was going to happen. And then Christopher Walker's character is definitely a, a weird dynamic. Because he's a guy that loves the great suits, fancy hotels. But at the same time, he's very comfortable keeping company with local gangs. People like Lawrence Fishburne, who's like a... Almost like a rap gangster, or at least close to it. Or like there's a bit where some teenagers try to mug him, and he could easily kill him. He's done that before for people who disrespected him. But instead he gets a roll of money and gives it to him and says, <laughs> you know, Come by the hotel. Ask for Frank. 
I got a job for you guys. And then there's this part where you, in a way, there's kind of morality for his character. Because he wants to be mayor and he wants to make these hospitals. But if someone gets in his way, especially if it's a cop, he is as hard-boiled as can be. So yeah, it's a little bit weird dynamic that maybe you chalk it up to this guy's fucking crazy. He just fucking insane. And Christopher Walton plays it fairly well. Like when he, we see him with Lawrence Fishburne for the first time in the movie and you wonder if there's going to be some hostility because the last time we saw Fishburne was him and Steve Buscemi and others getting this brutal gunfight in a room with some others. And you wonder, is this going to do the same thing? But instead... Lawrence Fishburne's like, you want some root beer? And Walt is like, nah. There's some things I won't do. And he's like dancing and shaking and having fun, whooping and hollering. And they are too. And he's like really good friends with them. And that's what I mean. It's not a clear-cut, one-dimensional role that Christopher Walken is playing. It's a very different type of character where you're never quite sure where the hell his mind is at. He's dangerous. He's deadly. But, you know, like the whole scene with the mudders. If you want a job, ask, ask for my name at the plaza. On the flip side, he's talking to another guy. Listen. If a nickel bag is sold in the park, I want in. And the guy disrespect to me just nonchalantly kills him in cold blood. You get these again out of the blue acts of violence. It's like, you're welcome. You're welcome. And even the same with Larry Fishburne, or Lawrence Fishburne, because he's a bad guy, but he did like little moments like he was trying to get something to eat. And the workers yelling at the kids not to play the arcade machine. So then Lawrence Fishburne gives quarters to the kids. Hey, you guys go and play some arcades. So he's very nice to the kids. But again, to cops, he just don't give a fuck. And then the cops, you have David Caruso. Yeah, Wesley Stipes, very early role for Wesley. So he's not as prominent as maybe you think he's going to be. He's really not. This is well before White Men Can't Jump, well before New Jack City, before Passenger 57, before all that, Demolition Man. So it is a smaller role. And him and Lawrence Fishman has his little rivalry going. Where Lawrence Fishburne, Fishburne's talking to the Wesley, hey, black man, flowers for your witness. And he throws the money at him. But yeah, Abel Ferrara definitely has some nice stylish direction for the beginning of the movie, for him getting out of the prison, and the way he showcased the, the city san landscape. Very nice to look at. Uh, kind of reminiscent of what you would see later in... in uh, Collateral. And apparently one of my cats is coughing so much he was stunned by the beauty. Because there are some really good looking shots. And even like when this nightclub shootout happens, you get some very moody blue lighting. And even you get some decent bits of dialogue, especially from Christopher Walken. I never killed anybody that didn't deserve it. Christopher Walken is a strong, deadly character. It's not someone you feel sympathy for. I don't think you're supposed to. I will say I can understand why people were not big fans of it back in the day. It is definitely a tough, grim film. Spoiler alert. Spoilers. Everyone dies at the end of the film. Everyone's dead. All the cops are dead. And they get killed, not in the most heroic ways either. I mean, Fishburne gets to drop on Wesley Snipes and shoots him. 
And then David Caruso finishes Fishburn. Caruso's at the funeral, and Christopher Walter just pops up, gets a shotgun, and blasts David Caruso's head off. So again, it's not really the most heroic deaths or there's really no one, I wouldn't say there's no one to root for, but it's, there's not much of a light at the end of the tunnel, if that makes sense. Which this lighting actually fits that demeanor. The last stop is a guy named Victor Argo. I don't mind the actor, but I just think there's other people that should have had that last bit for the film. Instead of Victor Argo. I just, when you have David Caruso, when you have Wesley Snipes, when you have some of these other actors in that cast, to me, it would have been much more of a successful venture if one of them was the last cop standing. And granted, it doesn't even matter because, like I said, everybody dies. That cop and walk and have a little shootout in a subway. The cop gets killed. White's been hit. Limps out, gets to a cab, and dies of his wounds. But I think that if you had a Caruso or Wesley Stipes... Well, I can imagine if you had Wesley Stipes, you had a little bit more to his character. And then, you know, things went different script-wise, and he was the last guy standing. I think it was something that the audience could swallow a bit easier. I'm not saying every film has to be that way. But I, I would not have minded. In fact, that's some, a little bit something I would have preferred. A consolation prize, if that made sense. Like, to me, if, if at least David Caruso made it out of it, and he didn't get killed, and you could do the shotgun to the face to Victor Argo's character, that would be even more surprising, or something else. But, I mean, I like David Caruso. He was in First Blood. He was in TV show CSI Miami, which I'm a fan of. So it was cool to see him in an early role. Because he was on this show, NYPD Blue, for the first year. Then he left to try to get success in movies. And that failed because... Kiss of Death I liked, but that didn't do well at all. Jade I don't mind, in particular the VHS Extended Cut. But that was a big bomb. And then he... Thought he was going to be a big movie star. And that fell flat on his face. And the best gig he had. Because most people would say NYPD Blue was the best job he had. He kind of. He abandoned. And really fucked up his career. Until CSI Miami came along. And he stuck with that show. For what 10 years. He's like I'm not going to make the same mistake twice. Wesley Snipes, again, if you're going into this for Wesley, you might be disappointed because there's not a whole lot of Wesley in it. I mean, he does appear sporadically. He does have some lines here and there. He is one of the main cops, but it's definitely more Walkins and to a lesser extent, Lawrence Fishburne's movie. Like, to, to have this kind of movie where you have this downfall of this teen pin and you know, you have some cops who yes you don't mind and uh easier to swallow ending new jack city was really the the key and that film made more money was a more success success at the box office and it seemed like critics liked that film more and i can understand but if i'm picking between the two i would say i like new jack city more than teen of new york but i still think christopher walken as magnetic as Frank White. There's nice little touches like these. What were they? Asian. I forget the characters names. But these other drug guys. And they have a penchant for watching horror films in the theater. Like they're watching Nosferatu and stuff. And like I said you get some. Really good acting roles. Like Fishburne sold it hook, line, and sinker as they walked in. 
So the Cops did well for the most part. Vic, I mean, Victor Argo, who's the lead, like, the older cop. I don't, I don't think his acting was bad. It's just he was the one of the least interesting of the cop characters. I mean, Crusoe, Snipes, they, I think they would have been better. Would have been the same role, which is what made sense. They were so young, but I just, I didn't. If one of them had more of a prominent role and then survived or something, I mean, at least that, I think would have helped the audience a bit more. But yeah, Tina New York. There are times where it kind of slows down a bit. I did this whole thing about him wanting to make these hospitals. I'm like, okay, I did what I was trying to say because it's this weird dynamic of this character, but at times it seems like that's not as played as much as it should have, if that's the case. That he has his big moral thing. Probably the, the best bit is one of the last speeches where Walt is talking about the whole system itself. I'm not your problem. I'm just a businessman. Uh, the action scenes are decent. There's one... I mean, there's a couple shootouts, including one where... Lawrence Fishburne has two guns blazing from up top of a vehicle, the sunroof, while Snipes and Cruz are chasing him down. I think Walken is driving the car. It's at night time. Nice practical blood squibs. I, I didn't, the violence, I didn't have much issues with it. Although, Tina New York is a decent movie. It's a pretty decent flick. So I have a film I would watch over and over again. I, mean, I would say I like Scarface with Al Pacino and New Jack City more. But like Scarface is just very entertaining. And then I did New Jack City, I was the way the characters are dealt, in particular the cops. The little more to my lighting. Because the cops here, it's not... I, I like them because of the actors, Caruso and Snipes. It's not because there's really much in the writing that really delved deep into those characters. I mean, the, the best was like this celebration of a wedding at a bar. But for the most part, again, it's walk-ins and, and others' movies. And yeah, overall, yeah, didn't mind the film. Did not mind the film at all. So, with that said, thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.